We have so many updates to get to today because it has been a busy week for Total Weirdos. But let's start this episode of News Dump Out with a positive story for a change because it's not the day after Halloween that truly signifies the beginning of the holiday season, nor is it the day after Thanksgiving. No, the holiday season isn't truly underway until our favorite yearly tradition has made its debut. Break out the stockings, the candy canes, and eggnog because the Yevlebakken did I say it right? You actually did, for the first time ever. The Jevlebakken has returned to its post in the center of the Swedish town of Jevle, where it is ready to be set ablaze by any would-be arsonist who dares to keep the highly illegal tradition of torching this oversized straw goat alive. After 11 months of silence, the Jevlebakken Twitter account sprung to life this week, announcing that the goat has arrived, has been erected, and has it, its horns lovingly placed on top of its head. Yeah, those are, uh, it's all gonna enjoy, enjoy it while you can, goat. Yeah. Enjoy it while you can, All goat. the pomp and circumstance for the next couple days, you better soak it in, Mr. Goat. We have covered the Yevla goat for years now, but here's a brief summary of why we love this holiday tradition so much. The display has become notable for being a recurring target for vandalism by arson, and it has been destroyed many times since the first goat was erected in 1966. Uh, because the fire station is close to the location of the goat, most of the time the fire can be extinguished before the wooden skeleton is severely damaged. If the goat is burned down before December 13th, the feast day of St. Lucia, the goat is rebuilt. The skeleton is then treated and repaired and the goat reconstructed over it using straw, which the goat committee has pre-ordered. <laughs> For just such an occasion. They know how this works. Mm -hmm. The goat has been burned to the ground most years since its first appearance, and as of December 2022, 38 out of 57 goats have been destroyed or damaged in some way. Uh, for clarity, it did end up surviving last year to yeah. all of our disappointment, but I believe the year before the was year the, before it did go it down. It did burn after like I think like a five or six year uh, cold streak. Yeah, the goat the goat fell in 2021. It was up last year, so you know what that means. I see a pattern. We'll see. It's become such a tradition that at one point, an American tourist visiting Sweden set the goat on fire, was caught and charged, and then defended himself in court by claiming that he thought he was taking part in a completely legal goat burning tradition. Yeah, I thought that's what you guys did over here. How was I supposed to know? What's the crime? Uh-huh. In the past decade alone, the Yevla goat has been burned to the ground six times. But it did, as Elliot say, have a pretty good streak up until 2021 with a record being broken back in 2019, which was the first time in history that the goat survived more than two holiday seasons in a row. We cannot let that happen. No. Well, the goat is currently standing tall. The webcam is now live on the town's official website. And based on the replies to their initial tweets debuting this year's Yevlebakken, it might not be there much longer. People are very thirsty to watch this goat burn. We would never endorse or try to influence anyone to do anything illegal, but you gotta admit, it's kind of fun wondering if and when the goat will burn to the ground. And of course, we will be sure to keep you updated. Yeah, we will be watching that Twitter account and all the relevant news sources, uh, yeah. the, the live feeds. But they uh, gotta do it before like the 19th or 20th, because that's when we go on break. I think in the 2021, it happened after we went on break, so. Yeah, but it was something to talk about when we came back. Yeah. Along with, like, the insurrection. <laughs> that was after, I think. Because that was the December of 2021, and that was... Oh, whatever. It capped off a wonderful year, though, didn't it? Anyways, let's move on now to the more important news from this week. And we're going to hold off on mentioning um, the Twitter guy. You know, the one we're talking about. The Twitter guy, the, the car guy. Yeah. For as long as possible. Uh, so let's start with George Anthony DeVolder Santos, because he simply will not go down without a fight as he faces yet another expulsion vote on Friday of this week. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. Try that in a small government. This is my fight song. It's the eye of the tiger, and he is gonna bring everyone down with him. I'm on his side with this one. Yeah, now that it's finally potentially coming to a close, look, I'm gonna miss the guy. These, he was duly elected democratically. Yeah. The system... By, by uh, you know, by trying to kick out George Santos, you are, that's an indictment of the entire electoral yeah, system. You're calling into question the entire system. Yeah. Are which, you prepared to do that? Which, it would be cool if you did that, but uh, I'm just saying, it's not, it's not really fair. Oh, we got rid of George Santos, we fixed it. No. Yeah. Right when he became popular enough for everyone in the whole world to know who he is, and even see a balloon 
that looks just like him floating around in DC. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, uh, truly an icon. Uh huh. Yeah, can't wait to see what he does next. Uh, he's gonna have to think of something because yeah. yeah, by the time you watch this video, you might already know way more than us, but that doesn't mean that the lead up to the vote was boring by any stretch of the imagination. Because when faced with the reality that he might actually get kicked out of Congress once and for all, Santos started calling out members of his own party. He went, he's going down swinging. Well, it's pretty rich for you to claim that I did something wrong when you, and then lists off any number of grievances. Yeah, uh, you trying to take down a, a sassy, uh, sassy gay? He's gonna take you down with him. Yeah. And we love him for that. He went from serving in Congress to serving in Congress. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get to the clips in a second, but here's the Associated Press with more on these latest developments. In his closing arguments for remaining a member of the House, a defiant representative, George Santos, depicted himself as a victim of a smear campaign by some of his colleagues and made clear that he would not resign before a vote Friday on whether he should be expelled. The first term Republican congressman from New York could well become just the sixth member of the House to have been ousted by colleagues. While Santos survived two earlier expulsion efforts, a critical House Ethics Committee report released on November 16th has convinced more members that his actions merit the House's most severe punishment. I will not stand by quietly, Santos said during Thursday afternoon's debate on the House floor. The people of the 3rd District of New York sent me here. If they want me out, you're going to have to go silence those people and go take the hard vote. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're, they're you're trying, not wrong. They're trying to stop democracy. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is very anti-democratic. Yeah. George Santos was chosen by the people of Long Island, New York Warts to represent all. them in Congress. And he has to stay there the entire time. It's up to them. I agree with Elliot. But I mean, really, like they should just. He did get un yeah. uh, elected under false pretenses because he kind of made up his resume and a bunch of other stuff and maybe hit a couple crimes uh, or whatever, but is lying, he was still uh, elected. Is lying a crime? Well, that remains to be seen. I mean, I guess it is. Yeah. Depends on what you're lying about. True. Quote, this will haunt them in the future where mere allegations are sufficient to have members removed from office when duly elected by their people in their respective states and districts, Santos said during a press conference held early in the morning before House debate began. And yeah, no, he's, he's, he's again, not wrong. he is not wrong. It would set a precedent that could easily be abused. Yeah. Uh, that that thing with Rashida Tlaib just a few weeks ago, that was like, okay, you really want people to just, I don't know, that was fucked up. This is a tough one. I was one. not a fan of that. No. Like, she was elected by her constituents, and so was George Santos. So this is, uh, they've got to tread lightly with this. Yeah. I say let him serve. Let him serve. He's only got, what, a year left? Yeah, who cares? Like... He Think of all the cool hijinks he can get in between now and next November. He already said he wasn't going to run again, to our knowledge. Well, <laughs> and actually, if I had to guess, the uh, 10 months that he's spent in Congress, he's probably committed fewer crimes than any other 10-month yes. period in his life. Yep. From what it seems like, this man is a serial uh, criminal. Yeah. Always up to something, but they gave him an important job in Washington, D.C., and he, he has no time to crime. The limelight is the perfect place for him to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it is undeniably entertaining having this man around. And, and you know what? I'm going to miss him regardless. Yeah. He's quickly become one of just the goofiest main characters in politics recently. And honestly, he's really only hurting his own conservative party who are constantly having to deal with all this drama that he brings along with him. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever. why should I care? Thursday's debate about his status as a serving congressman was no exception. He wasted no time clapping back at his critics by bringing up their own dubious extracurricular <laughs> activities. Yeesh. So that's just where we've stooped down to. People with rap sheets who think and feel emboldened enough to go call out other people. No decent cop would bring this to a prosecutor or a DA and say, here's our report, go ahead and charge him. Because if I leave, they win. If I leave, the bullies take place. This is bullying. It's all theater. It's theater for the cameras. It's theater for the microphones. It's theater for the American people at the expense of the American people because no real work's getting done. Oh, Today is my second year wedding anniversary and I'm going to enjoy it and try to forget the fact that it's been one year from hell, but I would do a few things differently. We know that Mr. Santos lied about his religious faith when he said he was Jewish 
and then later when called out said he meant to say he was Jew-ish. He purchased luxury designer purchases at at least two high-end stores. Then he spent money on payments made at OnlyFans. And that Mr. Span Santos spent almost $3,000 on Botox treatments. You, sir, are a crook. I know I should direct my comments to the chair. I yield back. Hypocrisy, as I mentioned. My colleague wants to come up here, call me a crook. Same colleague who's accused of being a woman beater. This conference has failed to pass four different appropriations bills, Mr. Speaker. And yet, this Congress has now taken three measures and the insurmountable amount of time that goes behind them to expel a member duly elected by the people of the 3rd District of New York. Uh, yes, he is, you know, he's going to serve until the day he is removed or voted out. And serve he will. What a fucking icon. Yeah. Put this man on the money. Again, nothing has helped him more than that awesome picture. The yeah. overexposed picture where he is hounded by the cameras and still, despite all of that, shows up every day yeah. and attempts to do his job. How is he any worse than you know numerous other people yeah. serving the House of Representatives? They just don't want to see a proud gay immigrant succeed in this country. That's true. That's true. They want to hold him down. Yeah, it's fucked up. I thought we were past that. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere in the GOP, though, dominoes continue to fall, and we should probably start out with the big guy, Donald Trump. Oh, by the way, there's a debate. While we film this, there's a debate happening between... Two people who are absolutely not running for president, or well, one of them's running, but not going to win. Two people who will never, ever be president, if you ask me. <laughs> Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom are debating for reasons unknown. I could not be less interested in hearing whatever the fuck It's literally just a up. Florida versus California debate uh, on Sean Hannity's show. So, whatever. Ugh. Anyways, back to Donald Trump. His gag order related to the New York fraud case has been reinstated by an appeals court. He tried to appeal, they said, nah-uh. We're bringing it back. <laughs> that means he's still prohibited from making public statements about courtroom staff. Doesn't mean he's gonna stop, though. And he's already proven that he has no intention of stopping, considering he's already violated that gag order twice so far, with the fine doubling each time. From CNN, Judge Arthur Nguyen originally issued the order barring Trump from making public statements about his court's staff after Trump made numerous comments about a clerk who Trump says is biased against him. Hundreds of threats against Angoran and the law clerk were made public last week. Angoran's clerk has received 20 to 30 calls per day to her personal cell phone and 30 to 50 messages daily on social media platforms and two personal email addresses, according to court papers. Holy shit. Yeah. It's extensive. Oh. oh. Turns out when the president targets you. By the, name. Uh, yeah. I guess he does Draw, have draws it, a little bit does of negative have attention. An, an army of crazy people with too much time on their hands. Mm-hmm. It continues, during a break in the trial Thursday morning, Engeron announced the appeals court ruling reinstating the gag order. I intend to enforce the gag orders rigorously and vigorously. I want to make sure that counsel informs their clients of the fact that the stay was vacated, the judge said. It is a tragic day for the rule of law, but we're aware. Oh, that Trump didn't say that, but his attorney, Chris Kai said that. Yeah. And I'm assuming he has a weird voice, too. <laughs> well, regardless of whether or not Trump himself was aware that the gag order had been reinstated, he quickly pulled out his phone and just started posting. Hell yeah. Uh, this time about the judge's wife, <laughs> <laughs> who he called a, quote, Trump hater, based on false and completely disproven information that was being fed to him by unreliable sources like Laura Loomer. Why is this woman, why does she have the ear of, like, the former and future president because like that's insane as of all the insane things like as we've pointed out before he has uh, a dwindling amount of support and it, it's being distilled into only the craziest people it's just wild because like we we go we go way back with laura loomer mm -hmm. she's just a fucking she's a she's a crank she's an online crank she looks like she's maybe 40 or 50 and been around. She's actually like 22. <laughs> no, but, uh, she's like, I think she's like 30, but yes. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, it's just, it's insane that this person, knowing everything over the past like decade with her, is, has the ear of Donald Trump yeah. and tells him what to do. Well, here's Rolling Stone. Since Wednesday, Trump has been leveling a frenzied barrage of posts on Truth Social attacking Angoran's wife. Many of the posts are based on anti Trump social media posts attributed to a user who goes by Don Marie alleged by conservative activist Laura Loomer to belong to Don Marie Angoran. 
Judge and Gorin's Trump-hating wife, together with his very disturbed and angry law clerk, have taken over control of the New York State witch hunt trial aimed at me, my family, and the Republican Party, Trump wrote on Wednesday on Truth Social. On Thursday, Trump continued his digital assault against Mrs. Engeron, authoring and reposting several missives referencing her alleged social media activity and Loomer's findings. In one instance, Trump captioned a screenshot of a post depicting a woman spray painting fuck Trump on a wall with, this is the judge's wife and family that are putting these things out. I'm not entitled to a jury under this statute. Can this be happening in America? This is the most unfair trial in the history of New York. And I've had some pretty unfair trials. I would know. <laughs> I go to court a lot. I'm constantly being sued and accused of crimes. They wouldn't even let me have a jury. <laughs> that was because your lawyer didn't ask one. Da -da -da -da. No, no jury. jury. <laughs> no jury. Just up to the judge, the liberal judge, the Trump-hating Trump judge. And wife. And his bitch wife. His ugly bitch wife. They had a Trump flag on their driveway that was burned and it said Libs Rule beneath it. <laughs> you got Adam Schiff's girlfriend or... Chuck Schumer's Chuck girl. Schumer, she gets yeah. passed around in Congress. Well, She's all of their girlfriends. He's, he's just giving them uh, constant reasons for why this gag order should be in place. Uh, yeah, no, the gag order is the concept of the gag order. was invented for this. <laughs> specific he is order. like the perfect recipient yeah. of the gag order. Yeah. Uh, as for the validity of the posts, first of all, trusting anything from Laura Loomer is already a bad idea. But court officials confirmed on Thursday that the posts did not belong to anyone related to Judge Angoran. Justice Ingram's wife has sent no social media posts regarding the former president. Al Baker, the state spokesperson for New York's Office of Court Administration, wrote in a statement, they are not hers. I do, I do love it's like, oh, Don Marie, this must be the Don Marie we're looking for, as if that isn't just like an extremely common fucking like first middle name. Or uh, a, something that was created yeah, or in it's, order or it's to just do fake. just this. Yeah. yeah. Loomer presented no evidence that the account belonged to Angoran's wife, who denied it was hers, and told Newsweek that she never had an account on that social media platform. New York's court system officially corroborated that on Thursday. What a mess. And this is clearly Trump uh, exploiting a very, very precise loophole in the narrow gag order because apparently he is not restricted from talking about Angoran's direct family members or the judge himself. Well, they should probably fix that. Yeah, and despite spreading blatant misinformation, the damage is already done because none of Trump's followers will believe or even see the correction. No. That's the point. Yeah. Speaking of things that Trump loyalists will never see nor acknowledge, there has been another new development when it comes to election interference in this country. Uh-oh. Against the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. They, they're, they're the ones doing it. Yeah. yeah, it turns out that the overwhelming majority of election interference and voter fraud seems to be coming directly from the party that is so outspoken about it. Which is weird. Mm, yeah. Oh, I'm so shocked and surprised. What? Two voting officials in Arizona have been charged by the state's AG with conspiracy and interfering with an election officer for refusing to certify the results of an election. From The Guardian, Tom Crosby and Peggy Judd, Republican County Supervisors in Cochise County, faced two felony counts for their initial refusal to certify the county's election results in 2022. Crosby and Judd had to be ordered by a court to certify the November 2022 election results, passing the statewide deadline for counties to canvas results. Even after the court order, Crosby did not show up to vote on the canvas. The indictment alleges Crosby and Judd conspired to delay Cochise County's vote canvas and knowingly interfered with the Secretary of State's ability to complete a statewide vote canvas on time. The two supervisors have repeatedly pushed false election claims and sought a hand count of all ballots, later deemed illegal. 2022, was that when uh, the astronaut went against Blake Masters? <laughs> that little fucking Nazi freak? Yeah, uh, also, I'm very excited for, for Crosby and Judd to drop their album. They're yeah. performing at Stagecoach this year. It's David Cros... Well, R.I.P. Cro Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Judd. Yeah. <laughs> Winona Judd. Yeah, the Judds. The Judds. It's and, CSNY uh, and the Judds together at last. Incredible stuff. Wow. They really could have done something special if they weren't involved in uh, withholding the results of an election. And if... if David Crosby wasn't dead. Mm, that too. Elsewhere, though, the swamp continues to be drained because two of the biggest MAGA support groups have been hit with scandals this week. And look, there's some pretty bad accusations going on here, and we won't get into the gritty details, but in one case, the co-founder of Students for Trump has been charged with assault in North Carolina. Here's NBC News with that one. 
Ryan Fournier faces misdemeanor charges of assault on a female and assault with a deadly weapon, according to the court documents, which allege he grabbed the victim by her arm and struck her in the forehead with a firearm. He fucking pistol whipped her. Yeah, and I, I recognize this name just as like one of those chuds, like the big chuds on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I, he, I remember seeing him around saying dumb shit, like around, he's been around for a while, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I guess I guess he likes hitting women in the head with guns. Yeah. Because he's a big, tough guy. But in another MAGA group, Moms for Liberty, most famous for their bans on books and bans on discussion of anything LGBTQ related that in schools. That doesn't sound like liberty at all. <laughs> has been hit with a massive, massive scandal this week. One that is clearly antithetical to their mission, whatever, whatever they claim it to be. Christian Ziegler, the Florida GOP chair and husband to Moms for Liberty co-founder Bridget Ziegler, has been accused of sexual assault by a woman who claims to be in, claims to have been involved in a three-way relationship with the couple. Okay, now that's the liberty I'm talking about. From Rolling Stone. Minus the assault. Yeah, minus the assault <laughs> stuff. But still, the, the whole, uh, uh, we are very much against LGBTQ stuff while also operating a polycule. Hell yeah. Is uh, yeah. a weird choice, but again... It, uh, it's, it's much darker than that. Here's Rolling Stone. The allegations against Ziegler and the claims that he and his wife are involved in a polyamorous relationship mark the second sex-related scandal to rock the upper echelons of the far-right activist group Moms for Liberty in recent weeks. Earlier this month, the Philadelphia Inquirer reported that Philip Fisher Jr., an organizer and pastor for the organization in Philadelphia, is a registered sex offender. Ah, oh, oops. Sources with knowledge of the investigation told the Trident that police officers executed a search warrant on Ziegler's phone, and the GOP chair is alleged to have recorded sexual encounters between himself, his wife, and the woman. Charges have not yet been filed against Ziegler, and the incident remains under investigation. Ziegler has denied any wrongdoing, with his attorney, Derek Byrd, telling the Herald Tribune, that his client will be completely exonerated. Kaka! I'm a bird. I'm Derek Bird. Bird law finally comes in handy. And there would be nothing really wrong with that choice of a lifestyle if they weren't uh, just, you know, uh, If it was single, A, a my, consensual, yeah, yeah, uh, well, B, they weren't uh, fighting against the rights of right. the very people who they enjoy the I company I mean, if, of. You, if you're fighting uh, degeneracy, you do kind of, uh, you, you, you lose a little bit of credibility when you yourself are involved in, in something that um, would probably be considered degenerate by people uh, You want to take a guess what, in what city in, in Florida this all took place in? Sarasota. That's where it happened. Uh, in less serious GOP weirdness this week, Rand Paul apparently saved someone's life by performing the Heimlich maneuver. Uh, it was another senator, popped that uh, whatever they were choking on right out of him. And that senator decided to use this moment to <laughs> attack the woke agenda. Okay. So you almost die and your first thought is obviously, how can I use this against the libs? What the fuck? You almost got to admire it. Uh, here's the Daily Beast. Always be whining. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here's the Daily Beast. Senator Rand Paul used the Heimlich maneuver on Senator Joni Ernst after she choked during lunch on Thursday, she confirmed on X. Quote, can't help but choke on the woke policies Dems are forcing down our throats, Ernst wrote on X. Thanks, Dr. Rand Paul. No, ma'am, you choked on the food that you were eating too much of too quickly, mm -hmm. you little pig. It's like when that pretzel tried to assassinate George Bush Jr. Oh, how could the fucking woke libs do this? Yeah. Shut up! Eat slower, you moron! What are you, a child? I cannot believe that American history was almost changed thanks to a little tiny salted pretzel. Uh, Dick Cheney would have become president, so... Uh, yeah, it's still, <laughs> I'm not saying it would have changed for the positive, no. I'm saying it would have changed. Although, I don't know, like, uh, W, uh, he, I think he got a little further than, than Cheney. He, he, he sold the war by being a, a folksy guy that you could have a beer with, even though yeah. he stopped drinking alcohol decades before that due to severe alcoholism. But, you mm -hmm. know, hypothetically, a proverbial beer. Uh -huh. uh, Dick Cheney, just, just Dr. Evil. Yes. Uh, he, ha he is, uh, as, as has been voted by netizens, he nah, is replacing the, the uh, Henry Kissinger yeah. in the no, uh, claw game. He is, yeah. He Henry is. Kissinger? I th Dick Cheney, is Dick Cheney even in this thing? Yeah, he's, <laughs> and, he, and he's another one who refuses to die. Yeah, he'll be around forever. Yeah, he's going to be like more machine than man by the end of it, but... Uh, yeah. But yeah, if Cheney... He's going to be around shooting people in the face till he's 105. If Cheney, if Bush had choked on the pretzel and 
fucking died, uh, and Cheney became president, like, it'd be easily, like the first like press conference and be like, all right, so how things, it sounds like things are going bad in Iraq, sir. And he's like, no, things are going just fine. Things are going perfectly well. What's that? Everything Iraq? is Never going heard according that name. to plan. And his that, that creepy fucking monotone he speaks in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be back to the news in just a quick second. But first, we already got our holiday wish this year. R.I.P. Bozo. Well, he, he lived to be 100, so I mean... Yeah. Whatever. It's still, it's still fun to upset the people who think that you should never speak ill of the dead. Mm-hmm. But anyway, if you're looking for a unique gift for yourself or someone in your life, look no further than today's sponsor, Uncommon Goods. These goods? Not common. They are uncommon. It's officially time to kickstart your holiday shopping, but there's no cause for panic. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, or your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. A few of our favorites that we spotted on their site include their National Park Candles, a create-your-own video game set, Tabletop cornhole. It's too cold outside. Bring the cornhole in and nope, put it on the no table. No one says you can't hole corn indoors. Mm-hmm. And also some calming shower steamers for when you get a little too anxious or upset about the holidays. Yeah, when your showers are too stressful, there's a there's a shower steamer. When the family's all there and you need an escape, a shower steamer and a and a locked door on the bathroom. Yeah. Really sets the mood. Bring the whole family. <laughs> so when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. From art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you could find just anywhere. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash newsdump. That's uncommongoods.com slash newsdump for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. They're all out of the ordinary. Yep. Well, let's get back to the news now, and we should finally talk about the fallout of what took place on stage at the New York Times Deal Book Summit. Go fuck yourself. Uh, Everyone's not, supposed to be laughing. They're not clapping and laughing. Let me say it again. Go fuck yourself. This is just like when I went on G-F-Y. stage. G-F-Y. This is just like when I went on stage with Dave Chappelle. I'm Rick Ross. Why isn't anyone laughing or clapping? I thought everyone loved me because my echo chamber proves that to me every day. I'm the protagonist of reality. Mm-hmm. Well, when we filmed our most recent ep- episode, the event had just taken place. And the big question on everyone's mind was, All right, well, first, what kind of drugs is this guy on? Why is he so terrible at running a business? And why does he seem dead set on running what's left of that business directly into the ground? But the second big question for everyone was, how the hell is ex-CEO Linda Yaccarino going to react to all of this? Yeah, she's going to storm out of the room. She's going to be like, that's enough. People were doing summoning circles for any second camera angle, any angle on the crowd, because a live reaction of Linda would have been... A, the only other gift that I could have asked for this holiday season. Aside from you clicking the join button and becoming a paid member of our channel. Thanks for your support. But anyways, th- at this point, we've become pretty much fans of Linda. I love Linda. I think Linda's great. And that's simply because she is taking the term girl boss to exciting new heights. <laughs> she simply cannot and will not be deterred from her goal of making X a success, no matter how much her boss tries to dismantle everything right in front of her own eyes. To her face. Yeah. I mean, you honestly kind of have to admire her ability to stay focused and executive speak her way out of any situation. She's pivoting. She's always pivoting. Yes, she is the pivot queen. Uh, (laughs) She uh, clearly has no moral compass. It is all business for Lindy Ocarino. She is going to fulfill her contractual obligations no matter what. It doesn't matter. She is laser focused. She's honestly the best employee. She is a, a shining example She's of a lo- what American ca- America can produce when it she comes is to employees. such a loyal soldier, which is going to make it so much funnier when she does eventually get ousted and immediately becomes Il- Elon's villain and the, oh, the, yeah. sole, the one solely responsible the, for the everything that he, went wrong. He literally, as predicted, just blamed advertisers for the downfall of Twitter in front of everyone. He's going to do the same thing yeah. to Linda. Hopefully, she does fulfill her contractual obligations... Uh, I mean, that's only going to result in 
years of court battles trying to get that money from right. Elon. Right, she's never getting paid. Yeah, but <laughs> I hope that uh, her exit only comes after she hits whatever mark she has to do to get yeah. that money. But before we get into Linda's reaction, though, I'm sorry, I can't possibly pass up another opportunity to show two of my favorite clips from the event on Wednesday. I can't get enough of him getting the guy's name wrong. It's just too good. Here you go. And, and Jonathan, like, the only reason I'm here is because you are a friend. Like, what was my speaking fee? You don't, you're not making was, any... Hey, for, first exactly. of all, I'm Andrew, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's okay. Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But... Okay, so yeah. if you were the CEO of a company and the owner pulled this stunt on live... Uh, television, on stage, yeah. in front of you and your fellow executives, the last thing you'd probably want to do is highlight exactly what just happened, uh -huh. blindly justify it, even though it will ruin your chances at ever bringing large advertisers back to the platform, and amplify the message to millions more people while it was temporarily being overshadowed by the death of Henry Kissinger. Yeah, they got a gift right there when that happened. But nevertheless, yeah. she persisted. And shortly after leaving the event, Linda just posted... <laughs> Fuck it. She posted the following on X, the everything app. She wrote, hot dog. <laughs> Sorry, I got the tweets mixed up again. Uh, we're, I, we're, why we're do constantly we, screwing that why up. Why do I still have that B-roll? Anyway, yeah. uh, that was a joke. Here's what she really said. Today, Elon Musk gave a wide-ranging and candid interview at DealBook 2023. He also offered an apology, an explanation, and an explicit point of view about our position. X is enabling an information independence that's uncomfortable for some people. We're a platform that allows people to make their own decisions. And here's my perspective when it comes to advertising. X is standing at a unique and amazing intersection of free speech and Main Street. And the X community is powerful and is here to welcome you. To our partners who believe in our meaningful work, thank you. It all happens. It all happens on X. It really on does. X. See, I was hoping she would throw that in at the end. I thought that she was her, her new tagline. Wow! It all happens on X. Engagement is up for some reason. <laughs> Between Henry Kissinger and Elon Musk telling Bob Iger to go yeah. fuck himself, we're, we're reaching new heights. And it all happens on X. Yeah. So then, of course, she attached the full 90-minute video where her boss just goes completely off the rails multiple times. The whole thing. Here. Watch. Watch for yourself. See how stable and normal uh, the guy <laughs> who's running this company is? And also, is? looking great, Mr. Musk. Looking great. Yeah. Not showing uh, clear signs of aging and uh, what appears to be the abuse of those sweet, sweet diet drugs. Yeah, it's funny. Like, every time we talk about, like, Cybertruck and stuff, like, I look at pictures of him from that event, which is only... Four like, years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And he, he looks... So much worse now than he did. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. I mean, obviously that was like right before COVID. But yeah, I think COVID made him really he pushed might, him over the edge. There, a lot of his actions could be explained by suffering from, of course, ketamine abuse. Yes. Uh, a a completely fucked diet if he's actually on uh, Ozempic or whatever, because he's probably not getting proper nutrients or anything. Uh, and then uh, long COVID. He could very well have long COVID. He's had that is, COVID like three times. Which is <laughs> hindering his cognitive abilities. That could be part of it. Uh, uh, anyway, speaking of everything happening on X. The Everything app. That's where the big delivery event for the Cybertruck took place. And thanks to the deadline for first deliveries, we also got more information about the truck itself. With more on this, here's The Verge. Four years after its debut, the Tesla Cybertruck has finally reached its first batch of customers. The truck was delivered to about a dozen people during a lavish event at the company's headquarters in Austin, Texas, at which Elon Musk predicted the truck would usher in a new, more exciting future. The company also provided updated details about the pricing, range, and features for the truck, much of which has changed significantly from the originally announced numbers. The rear-wheel drive version of the electric truck will start at $60,990. <laughs> nice. Uh, up from the original price of $39,900 in 2019. And we'll get 250 miles of range on a full charge, <laughs> which is uh, 
that's a lot more expensive and less of a range than was previously promised. Yeah, that's. I mean, two fifty is not it's bad. It's not nothing. But it's not impressive. It either. is not a leap in the technology of... Uh, Especially considering like the size that this battery must be. It's got to be the biggest battery Tesla's, well, aside from the semi. But this battery's got to be massive. Yeah. But the amount of weight in fucking stainless steel... Oh, imagine trying to tow anything. The, the range is going to drop drastically. Yeah. Luckily, the people buying this thing will be towing... Groceries? Know, uh, maybe a snowboard at most. Yeah, yeah. groceries... Uh, kids' soccer equipment, yeah. and uh, I guess uh, uh, doomsday prepper supplies. Well, at least they'll be able to hide behind their doors uh, yes. if anyone comes hunting. That's right. Yeah. Bulletproof. Uh, anyways, that the previous version, the one that was just under forty thousand and is now sixty thousand dollars with only two hundred fifty miles of range, that won't be available until twenty twenty five. Coming sooner, 2024, Tesla's order page states optimistically will be the dual motor and tri-motor Cyber Beast versions. The all-wheel drive Cybertruck will start start at $79,990, get 340 miles, hit 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, and do a top speed of 112 miles per hour. Death machine. And the tri-motor trim will run you $99,990, produce a ridiculous 845 horsepower with 10,296 pound-feet of torque and get around 320 miles of range, which is still below, even at the top level, what they were initially promoting. Yeah. So, well, so yeah, only a handful of trucks will be delivered on this very big uh, occasion, and the price of the truck has, uh, it's risen drastically, risen by 50%. (laughs) Well, the range of the truck has simultaneously dwindled. Basically, anyone you see driving a Cybertruck for the next few years will be a total sucker who paid $100,000 for Elon Musk's steel abomination. There's that guy driving the Homer around town. (laughs) Put it in H. So at this point, we're going to have to keep an eye on how the Tesla stock reacts, because as we explained on this week's episode of Tech News Day, there is a significant amount of money being held by Tesla for those pre-orders which may never come, yeah. or that people might not be happy with uh, now that the final specs and pricing have been revealed, and maybe they want that money back. Oh, geez, it's going to take a while. Uh, you know, that money's deep down in the hole. we got to go down and well, get it. Well, he did uh, you know, pander to my masculine sensibilities by naming the more expensive version the Cyber Beast. I would be a cuck, a total yeah. loser. That's the not one that to, uh, Mr. Upgrade. Beast needs to get that one. But uh, while we're on the topic of extremely public falls from grace... The Forbes 30 Under 30 list has long been mocked for its ability to highlight the young, seemingly brilliant entrepreneurs who are making a name for themselves across multiple industries, only for those brilliant shining stars to inevitably end up broke, in court, or federal prison, just scandalized entirely. Yeah, it happens so often that Forbes has now made an official 30 Under 30 Hall of Shame, and you'll definitely recognize some of the names added to the inaugural list. Like, honestly, if you're succeeding in your 30s, or under in your 20s, I mean. Yeah. If you're like really uh, making a mark for yourself in your 20s, like there's something sus about that. It's either someone else's fault and you're being positioned yeah. as the figurehead or something's up. Yeah, it's, it's someone, someone's uh, going to get left holding the bag it on It feels that. good to age shame in the opposite direction for once, you know? Uh, it's just, you know, your 20s if you're having fun. <laughs> it's uh, y- No, they're for making deals. Maybe illegal, highly suspect deals. Your 20s are all about um, pitching investors on a product that is like scientifically not possible yes. and can't ever exist. Uh-huh. But just convincing them that it is so they give you a bunch yeah, of money. Yeah, because you don't know any better. And then just stringing them along for several years yeah. until it all comes crashing down. How, why would you believe me? I'm 25 years old. <laughs> well, I'm just a little baby. What, do you worry? <laughs> huh. uh, here's business, in- business Insider with more on this. The Forbes 30 Under 30 list celebrates the achievements of young people making a mark in a range of sectors. Unfortunately, quite a few of the picks are now a little questionable to say the least. It's even become something of a meme, with users on X joking about federal authorities investigating those on the list. (laughs) (laughs) Announcing this year's list on Tuesday, Forbes acknowledged that there were some picks we wish we could take back. It's Hall of Shame starts appropriately enough with Sam Bankman Free, <laughs> the FTX co founder who was on the 30 under 30 finance list in 2021. Prosecutors said that Bankman Freed and other executives had used customer funds for luxuries and property. Bankman Freed was convicted on seven counts of fraud and conspiracy earlier this month. Yeah, and he's going to prison forever. Yeah. Do you know he still has a second trial coming up? Good. 
his, uh, his, he's got another completely separate trial about like uh, political corruption. Yeah. He's fucked. He is never getting out of also, jail. Also, uh, by the way, the Binance guy got taken down, and now Cristiano Ronaldo is being sued for a billion dollars for his ties to, I think, I think Binance. Oh. So well, crypto he, keeps falling He's going to have itself. to sell that statue. <laughs> the one good <laughs> thing. Uh, the former co-CEO of Alameda, Carolyn Ellison, testified against him after pleading guilty to seven offenses. She was on the Forbes finance class in 2022 and is also in the Hall of Shame. Martin Shkreli, a.k.a. the Pharma Bro, appeared on a 30 under 30 list in 2013 and reappears a decade later in the Forbes Hall of Shame. He achieved notoriety after hiking the price of a medication used to treat parasitic infections from $17.50 to $750. In an unrelated case, he served four years in prison for misrepresenting financials and attempting to manipulate a stock. The 2019 finance class included Charlie Javis, who founded a startup named Frank that supposedly helped college students get financial aid. It was sold to J.P. Morgan Chase for $175 million in 2021 after Frank claimed it had 4.25 million users, according to a lawsuit filed by the bank. The Department of Justice said Javis defrauded J.P. Morgan because Frank actually had... Only about 250,000 users. Mm. She's pleaded not guilty to charges including fraud and conspiracy. And there's Steph Corey, the co-founder of Away, a luggage company. She made the 2018 retail and e-commerce list before The Verge reported she bullied coworkers and implemented a harsh workload, prompting her resignation. James O'Keefe, the founder of the conservative project Veritas, was ousted in February after 13 years in charge, accused of misusing donor funds for purposes such as private jet flights. Crazy that he was on 30 under 30. Yeah. The away luggage one is always like so funny to me. I, I have I have an away it's suitcase. A great, it's, it's a great, great suitcase. <laughs> but then like you you read about like the fucking company culture there, and it's like, why are you guys acting like like you're like a tech company? You you make luggage. It's good luggage. Like why why are you bring the Silicon Valley mindset to a fucking luggage company? It's that is going to be one of the defining <laughs> things of the 2010s of just everything being a tech company, even yeah. though it had no business. Yeah, like, what like are you we doing? work. <laughs> we work. You're you're like a. Uh, a co-working space. Yeah. No, we're a tech company. How? Well, we got a tech vibe. Yeah. Uh, every health product has to be a tech thing. It, it's like, yeah. it's all bullshit. They're just all bullshit artists trying to get more money out of gullible investors. And it worked for a while until it didn't. Yeah. And clearly with the luggage, it's like... The luggage is great. But like, it's you didn't need to do that. You're making... You're just making your, you and all of your employees' lives harder... By acting like this is anything more than what it is. No, it's it, <laughs> it's it, it's so funny because like all it is is like very simple luggage that has a, a air of luxury about it. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, the wheels work really nice. Uh, and instead of just running a humble luggage company, <laughs> you're like, no, we have to chase. We have to be a fourteen billion dollar company. Hey, what what do you even do? You you design the luggage, you manufacture it, and you sell it like. What are you stressing about? I don't get it. Anyways, there are, of course, more names on the list, and links to everything are always down in the description below, but let's not end the episode on a low note. Let's instead cheer for one humble employee who was very emotional about leaving her place of employment after 10 long years. Obviously, we're hoping this doesn't turn into a milkshake duck situation, mm -hmm. so stand by. But the internet so far has embraced working class hero Gail Lewis, for her hard work, determination, and loyalty to a company that almost certainly wasn't aware of her existence until her story started going viral over the past week. Uh, on her last day at work, someone filmed Gail Lewis and her goodbye message that she sent out over a walkie-talkie. She's clearly emotional about it. We have no doubts about her sincerity. Coworkers and your place of business, it can become like a second family and a second home for better and for worse. Yeah. In Gail's case, it seemed to really make her happy, though. Uh, here she is signing out. Attention Walmart, this is Gail Lewis, 10-year associate, Morris, Illinois, 844, signing out, good night. And with more on the video, the response online, and an update from Gail herself, here's local outlet NBC5 Chicago. A former Illinois Walmart employee has responded after learning that her farewell message on her last day of work had gone viral and was seen by millions. Gail Lewis, who was employed at the Walmart in Morris, Illinois for 10 years, called the reaction to her message a dream. In a Facebook message to NBC Chicago, Lewis thanked everyone for the love and support. Words really can't describe my gratitude. It almost feels like a dream. I would never guess that this would get this kind of attention. 
Her message comes after her sign-off to fellow employees caught the attention of residents in Morris on social media and later made its way to TikTok. In her goodbye, Lewis was overcome with emotion. The footage of her farewell has been seen more than 20 million times since it was uploaded on TikTok on November 16th. But while it begins with a brief sign-off, it then goes to Lewis sitting inside her car as she explains how much her job and coworkers meant to her. Leaving Walmart, she explained, was a happy sad. While grateful she landed a job elsewhere, the Walmart employee was saddened to leave her fellow associates, who she said became like family over the years. I've been through a lot with them, she said. They watched my back, I watched theirs. They helped me out, I helped them out. Yeah. All right, there, there you, you go. go. A sort of feel-good story to end the show. Someone who made the most of their job and appeared to be a shining light of positivity in the business. Uh, she hasn't said where her new job is. We hope she's happy, though. We hope they gave her a big raise from what she was making before. Because Walmart, not really known for paying too good. Yeah, the, the, the very slight indications of happy, sad, and I'm going elsewhere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that's how it is with like a lot of places. You're like, fuck this job, but like you still, you're like, I'm I'm still gonna miss this terrible. That's fucking a good job. worker too. Yeah. Like I look, I don't want to leave. I got another job offer. Got to do it. Love the people here. Yeah. So this is the best you could hope for, I guess. Anyways, if you really want to get caught up on so so much more drama from this week, you should really watch our most recent episode of Tech News Day because we covered a lot on that video. First, though, please get into the holiday spirit by liking this video. Click the like button. It's so festive. Look, little confetti pieces fly wow. out when you click it. Wow! What an amazing experience. Thank you for granting my holiday wish. Also, then make sure you're subscribed. If you want to support the show, give us a little Christmas bonus. Click the join button. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. And now, check out our most recent videos over here on the side. Again, that Tech News Day, a lot happened. Please watch it and our most other most recent videos. And we'll see you soon for we Weekly Weird News. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.